pop the top, it's time for another video to drop and today we're talking about W2K23 and I'm here with the man himself, Lionel Jinx. What's up everybody, it's your boy. And let's talk about this, Lionel. W2K23 is coming at y'all faces if you pre-order March 14th for the Icon Edition, March 17th regular release. Now last time I talked to you, Lionel, was W2K22. Mm -hmm. And something I want to talk about out the gate that I read from y'all on screen right with yourself and the man to myth the legend, which if you haven't seen my Brian Williams interview already, go ahead and go see how much I love that man. But y'all's interview on screen right, y'all mentioned something that we talked about on W2K22 that advanced entrances were not in W2K22, but they're back in W2K23. Finally, finally, they're back. That was one of the hardest decisions on 22. Um, when we looked at like what it would take to get that mode back in the game, but stable, because we know it was full of crashes, bugs, issues, and we're like, it's, you know, trying to hit different doesn't mean putting out a buggy game, all right? So for us, we had to take a step back realize like how we want to bring this thing back and make it stable and built on everything that we've worked on for 22 and built on the same foundation of the tools our pipeline and have a, a great user experience like when i say great user experience like imagine taking shotzi's entrance with the tank transitioning to undertaker's entrance on a bike and then, then switching it up to like someone holding a cell phone and like all of these things and blending it together where you're just like yeah i don't care that it might not have continuity but the freedom Right, that's what you guys want, is that freedom to make whatever it is that your mind comes up with, and it's back, right? Like, I, I love it. And freedom is a very interesting word to use, now because I read that y'all said some pretty good things about universe mode. Oh yeah, no, um, I will say, like, we had to rewrite it multiple times. And, and so, what we did on 22 was like, the beginning of it. So like, it, it's ours now, but at the same time, it didn't allow us that freedom as not only designers but even freedom as like a user to like author the stuff that they want to see in the universe so we rewrote it on top of the rewrite to where it's built on top of the same engine that runs my rise Ooh, so okay the designers have the same tools same animations access to all of the hooks that my rise has now in universe my favorite thing i think i think universe is gonna be the sleeper oh i think it's gonna be the sleeper as well so i'm playing the other night i'm playing and I'm like, I think I'm playing until like two o'clock in the morning. I was like, I'm gonna go in NXT. I'm gonna go Superstar mode. I'm gonna choose Axiom. I'm gonna rivalry with Wesley. And I see my events and I'm like, oh, there's the momentum meter and it's even because we just started the rivalry. And I'm like, all right, my event, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna face. I'm gonna shake his hand before the match and, and, and do something like that. But there's a list of all these other actions I could, you know, attack him before the match, attack him after the match, bring in an ally to like mess with him. He also has an action assigned to him, an event, and he's like, okay, but you don't know what it is. And then it's like a little gamification happens, you're like, mm, who won the event? And it's usually based on like who has the most momentum, other factors, and you're like, okay, he won. Now let me ask you, and you can say no, because I know, we can't let the cat out of the bag. However, I do gotta ask you, with what you just said, are you able as a user who loves customizing their universe, am I able to choose an action for one person and an action for another person in the same match? In the regular universe mode, there's a free mode to where you okay. can be like, look, I don't like, I don't want to, I, I don't want the gamification part. Gotcha. Like, I want to control everything. Yeah, that's, that's so you're free mode. Day. I'm like, okay, I want these actions. I want these actions. But if you want the game to kind of like still surprise you, right? You're like, okay, I want, I'm gonna choose this action for this guy, and I don't know what he's gonna choose, and let's see what happens. Because right. you have that element of surprise, and you're like, oh shit, like I didn't expect that to happen. I just got like, you know, when I when I when I when I, when I went against Wesley. He attacked me before the match, hurt my arm. I go into the match and I'm like, basically half health. And I'm like, lost that match. And I'm like, all right, I'm still gonna play it cool. I'm gonna be a face and I'm still gonna like play this cool. I'm gonna choose like face type actions. He chose another heel one, hurt my leg the next time. And I'm like, when you see that cutscene play out, you're like, all right, that's it. And he, he flipped me, I went heel on him. And then I started winning and I got the event. And so I started attacking him. I started bringing the allies to come in with a kendo stick and beat him up. And I'm like, oh my God, this is just week one. You know, like, boy, well, not week one. This is the first the first month in the rivalry. And I'm like, all right, started the next rivalry. And I'm like, this this is that level of storytelling and drama 
that the game has been missing that you were hoping to maybe see it in the universe, you know, if they decided to play a cutscene, but now you have full control over it, having to see something every time you play it. Yeah. Now, somebody I have been mentioning with you since we started this interview was Mr. Brian Williams. Oh. How does it feel to have Brian Williams back? Oh, man. Um, so I had a pleasure of meeting Brian Williams back in 2012, 2013, and we worked together for that one year, or like a year and a half, on 2K14 and 2K15. I love you, Will. Uh, we were instant friends, um, and you know when when he left, like it just never was the same, right? Like B Will was the face of the franchise. Even me doing the dev stuff, it just you know I felt like I was missing an arm. And when we shipped 22, I was like, yeah, this is a success, and we got the, the game back on on a solid foundation. There's something missing, and I called up B Will, and I'm like, yo, I'm like, you ready to come home? And he was just like, brother. Bro, I'm so glad you called me. He was like, he was like, you know what? I'm ready. And I was just like, and we talked, and we talked. And I think we talked for a couple hours that night, and we set the wheels in motion. And the next thing I know, a couple weeks later, um, he was on the team, contributing, doing the things that he always did for us, like you know, having a huge impact on gameplay. You know, big moves, guy. Big mo cap, guy. going into mo cap. Uh, just even like you know, like Dino would be the sounding board off you know for me like hey you know I got this idea for showcase what do you think and I'm like man this is dope like you know doing what we're doing with, with John Cena in the showcase and flipping the script on everybody we're like you're playing as the opponents not as John Cena like oh I was like I love it let's check what B Will and I'm like and B Will was like oh man I love it bro. I love it bro. and I was like okay cool like it's like to me not only is B Will you know the face of your childhood like he's the face of the franchise he has the history and the knowledge that you know the majority of our team just doesn't possess right like yeah as much as i might know about this franchise brian williams trumps that y'all could catch my brian williams interview to see me gush about the man in front of me but it's the mega powers you need oh. that's how i feel. oh yeah that's how i feel yeah that's how it feels now I also talked to Christina Damn Fan earlier. Now, briefly, I want you to just talk real quick on something that you're impressed with by the art team. I'll tell you what mine is real quick, yeah. just to give an example. I played War Games a little bit ago. I was shocked to my core to see that Survivor Series War Games made the cut, because yeah. that's, that's very new. Yeah, um, that came in late. <laughs> as, as, <laughs> as it always as, does. As it always does. Um, so like when we made that decision to, to put War Games in the, in, into the game, we're like, what do we base it on? Because NXT had a couple of different versions, but the latest version had the cages in the crowd. It's a smaller venue where the previous version had them up on the stage. And you're like, all right. When we first did the prototype, we were like, hey, let's, let's think about adding it on the stage. We have to figure out entrances and coming down from there. And we're like, yeah, but that's not the current version. NXT has them in the crowd, and it's just visually for our game. It looks beautiful, right? Like you see those cages, it's lit up, them coming in. And I'm like, let's go for that one. And so we did it, did all this work. And it took a while for it to, you know, to get to, to the state that it's at. And we're like, and uh, WWE just announced War Games in Survivor Series. You're like, I hope that it mo it is modeled after the NXT version. And it wasn't. But at the same time, you're like, you know what? I think the fans will appreciate the fact that we have it in the game, even though it might not look accurate to what you saw at that PLE. But the fact that it's in the game and you have 3v3, 4v4, our game currently still doesn't support 5v5. Unfortunately, one day we'll maybe get there. Um, but, you know, to me, like just seeing the amount of destruction and chaos that you so can many weapons. <laughs> control so many in weapons. that match, it's, it's so much fun, right? And I think it's the culmination of everything we've ever worked on. Like yeah. from like the improvements we've made to like physics objects and navigation and springboarding from one ring to the next and so fighting great. in the trenches, like everything that we've ever worked on. It's like, that is the culmination of all the systems we're working at the same time. Now, going into another question that I have, I would be remiss if I did not mention Dino in showcase mode. Oh yeah. Now, you know me, you hear me last year. Man, I hate showcase mode. I, I think showcase mode's a waste of time. I don't like showcase mode. I think this might not be good anymore to have in the game. Now, y'all made me eat my words this year. And the reason why is it's completely revamped. You no longer play as the showcase star you're not playing as John Cena, you're playing against everybody that's facing John Cena. And I think genuinely, that might be the greatest thing to ever happen in showcase mode. Ever since it got introduced way back in like WWE 13. 
like being able to play against your opponent, the move sets you're gonna have, every match is gonna feel different. John Cena, we all know, we know the meme, Super Cena, do 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 do. It's gonna be a challenge every single time. What do you feel about showcase? Ah, uh, to me, it's one of those things, like you said, like when you first hear about it, you're like, a John Cena showcase, really? Like, I'm just gonna win like he does in real life all the time, but then you realize what we're doing. It's like, no, he actually lost. And he lost on the biggest stage a lot of times. And you're just like, and we're highlighting that. And you think about like his motto, never give up. That implies that he's had to fight through adversity. That implies that he had to pick himself back up after a defeat or something that has gone wrong. And we highlight that. And you're like, oh shit. You hear him talk about what he was going through at that time when we do our documentary videos. You're like, oh, he was really going through some stuff. Right. And he really had to fight through this in order to become that guy that we perceive as super Cena, yeah. that never loses. Like, oh, but that's how he was formed, right? Right. You're like, almost like the origin story of like any superhero, right? right. It's just like, these are the times that kind of beat him down to make him who he is. Yeah. And to highlight that, and like you said, put it in a video game to where you're switching it up and not get bored of using the same moveset every single time. When we heard complaints about that, you're like, no, I get to use this guy and learn this moveset. And the guy I've never tried and learn this moveset right. and go up against this guy who's really strong that I already perceive as being super. Like, it's gonna be a challenge. That's, that's the video game recipe, right? Like, it, so like when Dino pitched it, I was like, Oh my God, dude, this is brilliant. Like, it's just like, yes, let's let's go all in. And then when we pitched to Cena, we didn't know how it was gonna go. And he was like, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, I get it. Cause he knows, like, yeah. the fans feel a certain way about him. He was like, yeah, there's gonna be people who wanna love to beat me up. I think this is amazing. And we're like, thank God. <laughs> now, last note I gotta ask you about, I don't know how much you could talk to me about it yet. I did see you talk about it with Brian Williams on the screen right interviews and other interviews. So I just wanna ask you in person. My GM. So, my GM going into this game, what's new about it? Or can we not get too far into it? Because I did read some additional show options. I'm very interested about that. Yeah, so there's some additional match types. Um, and, uh, you know, I think there's going to be some welcome additions here. The biggest thing I, I would say is, like, yeah, it was fun, but you only were competing against one GM. Yep. You're competing against four GMs. Up to four? Up to four GMs. Oh, y'all already know how we get down on vibe. There's three of us. Right. One GM. Oh, right. my so, GM going to be crazy. So, like, imagine, like, all of the drama that you had to deal with with just people wanting to jump ship from your show. Now there's other three other shows that you're competing with, right? right. And fighting for viewership and just the back and forth between those things and the, and the, and the power cards. It's like, it's just a lot more to do and a lot more to do with, like, I would say numbers, yeah. right? Match types, um, roster, even like the fan favorite, enhancement talent, local talent, you know, like, those have been totally revamped uh, and given, this thing, you know, I always talk about, our creation suite, it is finally on par with I read that. a WWE superstar. Yeah. Like when like I'm like I'm playing through the game and I'm creating guys in either my rise or just an exhibition, look into the level of detail that we put in our creation, our creation suite and our creative superstars. And then that's the same engine that's driving a lot of those enhancement talent. They look like WWE superstars. Yeah. They're finally at that level. So you're like, oh my gosh. And so you can't end up rooting for some of these guys to like become uh, you were champions of your, your GM. Right. Now last last question. Final question. Let me get, let me get your fave five, no Booker T, but let me get your fave five from WWE 2K23. What are your five favorite things? It could be a mode, it could be a match type. I know War Games is going to be one of them. Oh, absolutely. It, it could be a superstar's entrance, it could be a look, it could be anything. Oh, yeah, yeah. All right, so number one, War Games. Number two, Universe. Ooh, I like to hear that. It's my sleeper. Number three, Cody Rhodes. Oh, he like, looks great. He too. looks amazing. Like, he is the best looking character in the game. Number four, I want. I almost revealed it. Um, we have some dope Easter eggs. If you um, if you play through uh, Showcase, there's a dope, there's a dope Easter egg. A uh, couple of them there. Interesting. Uh, number five, Bad Bunny. Oh, word! I had to take screenshots from uh, of him for marketing a couple days ago. Right. Looks like a photo. 
Really? Wow. Okay. Like, you know how you got the cool stubble right here? I mean, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. dude, like, you zoom in on him and you see the loose hair and the loose, and oh, you're just like, oh my God, like, he looks real. That's like, awesome. he's in a video game. It's, I mean, y'all had MGK last year. Y'all got Bad Bunny this year. I'm telling you. I'm just saying, y'all ever get Master P in the game, I'm going crazy. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> y'all miss No Limit Soldier. I mean, we got, you know. <laughs> It's an open door now. Like, <laughs> hey, whoever wants to come over, you can play. Hey, well, I know. Thank you so much. Uh, WWE 2K23, go ahead even stronger. Even stronger. You know what I'm saying? Even stronger. Make sure y'all pre-order the game. The Icon Edition releases March 14th. If you do not pre-order the Icon Edition, what are you doing? Let's be honest. It comes out March 17th. Once again, Lionel Jinx, Phoenix Nitro. Make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. And as always, and forever, take it easy, though, y'all. Peace.